In the name of the Allah, Allah most merciful, the most compassionate, ladies and gentlemen, greetings all. On behalf of His Excellency Dr. Jamal Tsuaidi, the manager of the Emirates Strategic Center, I would like to welcome you all this evening in the lecture under the role of culture in promoting peace, development, and coexistence, presented by Dr. Jamal Abdul Jalil, Secretary General of the National Council for Culture Arts at State of Kuwait. Dr. Abdul Majid is the Secretary General of the National Council of Culture. Uh, Dr. Abdul Majid received the, his bachelor's degrees in politics and economics from Kuwait University in 1981. He has held many positions, including assistant director for marketing external projects in the Kuwait Foreign Investment Company from 1981 to 1988. Administrative Affairs Director at charge of employment, training the media and general services affairs at Industrial Bank of Kuwait. From 1988 to 2014, director, editor, and presenter for culture and documentary programs at Kuwait Television, and documentary presenter at Dubai Television from 1999 to 1991. Dr. Abdul Majid has published several search articles, studies, and has written three books. He also member of several professional association, including members. And now we'd like to invite him to present his lecture. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. It's a privilege and pleasure and honored and proud to stand before you in this evening and to be among you in this session, in this ceremony one of the sessions held by the strategic center this momento this moment this moment this platform that proved its existence on the arena or the arena or realm of research and in the gcc and beyond this platform this center has proven that it's capable uh, to compete with international platforms in the search in terms of outcomes and research in all aspects of social, economic, and political. It's a platform, it's a, a landmark that is a source of our pride that we are at this center. I speak in my capacity as a citizen. I'm so proud of this citizen. So I'd like to thank, I'd like to, with great gratitude his Excellency Dr. Jamal Laswedi for inviting me. And he is a good friend of mine. We used to sit at the classroom, now we work together. The UAE country has its place in our hearts as Kuwaitian and the Kuwait people. We cannot forget its stance when it's st when we in present represented by the late Sheikh Zayed Sultan, who recruited the government and the people and the army to free and liberate Kuwait in 1991 from the invasion imposed by uh, on it. So we cannot forget the, the, the stance by UAE. Now we are brothers and I'm in my second country. In reality, this center we have close connections and we have a memorandum of understanding that has been signed four years ago. And this memorandum of understanding is still stand and still it has its well, that genuine well for collaboration and cooperation between the Kuwaiti Library and the, and the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research. I think it's my duty to activate this memorandum by this lecture. The subject I would like to address this evening, the role of culture in promoting peace, development, and coexistence. This three lectures or three topics are, co co are linked. We cannot segregate them. And I've tried to simplify the lecture to have a scientific seriousness by the paper that I published and I presented to the center. And they have a summary for this lecture. 
so we can understand and make it beneficial to the to the audience. At, in the beginning, I would like to talk about a preface of the culture. What do we mean by culture? And you all know, you are all cultured, but when we stand, when we reflect on a, a word like uh, culture, it has many different meanings. We can see it's very ambiguous and very confusing word because it has so many meanings and it has so many vocabularies and terms. A word that one single, however, it has so many meanings. It's it's deluded in the meaning. This word means civilization. Is it, is it a, a civilization or a part of a civilization? Is it a, the production of human scientific and cultural uh, outcome? Is it, the cult is it the culture? Is it the values? Is it the scientific and educational outcome? So it has been known that culture is anything that's non-material. In, on our life. Culture has ex extends to the past and to the present and it is very closely linked to the future. Culture is a, 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 a platform that contains creativity and innovation. Culture has a very close connection with building human and illuminating humanity, culture is closely linked to the characteristics of the nations and people, wherever they are. Any people, any ethnicity, any color, any spot in the world that distinguishes between nations is bound to culture. Let's have an, a, a very simple analysis for the characteristics of the culture. There is a personal culture. It's a culture that expresses the characteristics or features of people who have science and who have knowledge, experience, their behavior, their values, their, be their attitude. This all can be measured and they, they we call this personal culture. And then the other second point, we have the social culture is a characteristics of a society. That culture, it can be described the entire society can be described by a certain characteristics. That culture motivates that nation to move forward with a nice and good spread. There is the importance of the culture. The importance of the culture is there is no doubt is com it complements the education. It it purifies the soul and the, uh, the spirit. It, it enlightens the brain and the mind that enhances and improves the behavior and also eliminates any negative phenomena in our society. That's all done by the culture. It faces the challenges with strong capabilities. This is all what we say by culture. The tools through which we build culture is in the culture, in the, in the education, in how advanced our education, on how we gain knowledge, on how we earn, learn languages, how we use tech, Technology, the, the 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 existence or presence of libraries and cultural centers, the media tools, and how legitimate and credible they are. TV, radio, press, media, or new media. There are characteristics for culture that we need to be aware of. The the. Those characteristics are inherited. They are not gained. They are they 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 are gained throughout the year. They accumulated through a, gaining more and more experience. And could be accumulated. It's human. It human humane. Culture is limited to human. That was honored by God. Culture is transferable. It's not static. Culture is dynamic. It could move from a place to another. Culture could move from an individual to a nation. Culture can be developed with the time. In other words, it could change, it could improve, it could be renewed. Culture could reward the soul and the spirit. The more you are cultured, 
the more high you become, the more elevated you've become. So you become at ease when you deal with people. Also, culture is predictive. So you could predict through that standard and criteria, eliminate or, or judge people whether or not certain individual is cultured or whether or not certain individual is adaptable. After that, after this short preface, we will move on to the other, the first uh, point, the culture and the development. And I would like to highlight in this lecture about three elements, the characteristics of the culture, of the Arabic culture in particular. So we will not, we will not talk about some different topic, different topic. The Arabic culture is based on the Arabic civilizations and the many resources and the rich uh, resource that we have, that we got from the our old in, her inheritance that ha should have, should inspired us to alleviate our civilization and make our civilization a tool to develop our, our, our society. Culture has the human values and the high moral of dealing with people. This is the originality of Arab when they deal with their culture. The values of culture as an Arabic culture is based on the Quran and the, the biography of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Those, those values have taken from other inter international organizations. The other international and region organization have taken the role, the values of Islam in placing their agreement and degrees that, that we sign today. And we are Arabs and Muslims we have had those roles and have those values 1,400 years ago. So we, in other words, we are the manufacturer of the culture. We are the Arab, the manufacturer of cultures. We placed those, that, those cultures and values as a, a, as a, as a role, as a, as a way for people to learn. And culture could have a sustainable culture Without culture, we cannot have a society with values and with connections. The most important element is the connections between culture and development. To know that society really cares about culture, we, need, we should know that the society wants that culture has, has a role to play in the development. Look at the manufacture, the manufacturing and the industry. Look at the outcome that particular society produces and intellectually. Here we say that that particular country, that particular society really cultured because it produces cultural products. In the characteristics of culture that we find among people in, in, ethnicity, in, in ethics and morality, there's also a very important element that we can dis distinguish in terms of culture and development and the support by the government to support the, the culture. And the government shouldn't marginalize culture. Government shouldn't put place culture at the, at the bottom of its priorities. Co government, government should advance quickly in terms of technology and development it has to have to has to have an environment to leg legalize for all aspects of knowledge and culture. The, that government should have to have an infrastructure, projects, and institutions, cultural institutions that are capable to embrace the cultural scene and improve it, and link the edu education with with culture. And this is a very important element today. Today, many cultures, many ministers have been formed before the, the culture is a long-term investment and the media is short-term investment. If you want to build a, a nation that cares about education, should, you should have a long-term investment. We should care about, for those decision makers, they should care about, they should pay attention with linking the culture with the human capital. They should have a very rich, they have very rich uh, human capital. We ha it's our duty 
to preserve our identity and protect our inheritance and culture and folklore and history. We are responsible to preserve the language, the Arabic language. This is a big responsibility. And we have to preserve our language and protect it from any internal or external challenges that try, that try to eliminate and weaken our language and we shouldn't communicate in English language, although some languages, we should be confident of our language, of our Arabic language. We should be confident of our language that can face the world. The role of cultural activities, as to the, in today's event, is to alleviate the educational, educational and cultural development. And thanks to this center for its great efforts, that it's been ex exerted by organizing many events and lectures. And those events and the previous events, this is an evidence that there is a life, there is presence to enhance the cultural scene in this, in this country that, uh, that flourished by uh, culture and education. Culture is a very strong engine to social development. All life, nations, and society that want to, to, be, to, to, to sustain its existence, they should place culture at their, their priorities. There is no education without culture, and there is no culture without education. So we have to have freedom, but responsible freedom, and has, there should be regulated freedom. Culture, so therefore, is a pillar, is a main pillar for the sustainable development, and to place a very a uh, su sustainable development role for a so society. And the UN Sustainable Development Agency placed culture and education at the heart of its priorities and the importance of culture as a part of the sustainable development. And this is the role of the decision makers to pay attention to activate this role. Culture is a, a mirror that reflects the state of the society, is a characteristic that indicates the states of the society and the country. We rely heavily on the elite and the leaders of, of literature and culture to take initiatives to, play, to, to place in reality everything I mentioned earlier. And that is a big responsibility for the civilian institutions and also the cultural elites to play their role and to achieve that goal. So also social cooperations, social clubs, they should revise the rules and for the, for the five years to come. Also, in, also checking and inspecting the, the comprehensive or complete quality. And what are the outcome for the, what are the outcomes of those uh, co cooperations they, the, the civil cooperation, the, so, the social cooperation, they should play their role also. We move on to the other aspect, the tourism, tur, tur, tourist culture. Many countries pay attention to the tourist culture. There, the tourism has many types and has so many pillars. Some countries, they have some elements, some, some aspects of culture. Let's talk about culture in enhancing the internal tourism and enriching internal tourism and play, making one of the main uh, income for the, for the country. And that requires paying attention to the cultural tourism. We have to have an infrastructure, a comprehensive infrastructure for the tourism. And we have to have an activity, a sustainable, renewable activity, a diverse, diverse activity for the culture. We have to develop the political activities and the freedom that also regulated regulated freedom and setting up setting up a platforms electronics platforms all over the world that could promote and market for the culture tourism particularly on those countries that have the foundations for tourism that could play a, an active role in terms of cultural tourism we have to adopt, countries have to adopt a strategic, strategical plans that has strategy and budgets. 
by the government. The harmony between the Arabic and and Arabic uh, Arabic um, tourism through government through agreements. The risks that we are that face the Arabic culture in the in the framework of the glo globalization is the immigration and living with with those living with those challenges requires us to be determined determination and facing those challenges in with collaborating and with collaboration and we have to face we Arab should face those challenges and we have to be frank and we should be honest with one with each other we should face those challenges we have to talk we have to talk to each other if we want our culture to reach to be to develop and to be to reach to be flourished there are there is the comprehensive plan to for, for cultural development the arabic cultural development that started with the kuwaiti initiative in 1985 in the Arabic, uh, in Arabic uh, League, and it's renewable after uh, in each and every five years. And by the grace of God, in this country, in this year, in December, in the last December, in, in in this December 2020, there will be a meeting in the UAE, a conference for the Arab Minister of Culture, that will set up a new plan that will alleviate, by the grace of God. By the it will alleviate the Arabic culture, and they will have approach and a strategical plan, and we will have a, a, an action plan. We hope, as I mentioned earlier, that that we should consider how to face and how to face the extremists and uh, extremist groups that they started to propagate and they started to spread all over the place. Those extremist uh, thoughts and ideas that we should fight and we should fight and eliminate, and those should, uh, our strategical plan should include an element of fighting those extremist uh, group. And now we move on, if you allow me, to the second element. The second element is peace and culture. In our peace and culture, we start by the verses of Quran. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, quote unquote, those who believe in Allah enter to the peace and do not follow this, don't follow the steps of the evil or devil, he's your enemy. This is a great verse. And when we talk about the culture and peace and development, as I, as I pointed out earlier, we've had those rules and regulations in our religion, in, in our religion, in a very peaceful religion. All those, in, all those regulations, all those instructions call for peace through culture and co tolerance and dialogue and meeting and peace and love and calling, calling for peace. This is Islam. The relationship between culture and peace is a very strong connection and very strong and robust relationship. It is it based on education and based on general education. That connection and national security as well. That calls for resolving our conflicts in peaceful manner and and tolerance and net and not to disagree on the basis of religion or ethn ethnicity we have to activate the rule of peace that weapon this is soft power that we can impact on the souls on the people and the minds in our society and, we, and, and outside our society with these with this globalization that we can see all over the, all around the place, the importance comes the importance of the culture in our in the close and distant nations, and that help propagate the culture of the world. That led to diversity in the 
discussion between civilization after we had clash between civilization and taking part in building bridges between people and nations and there are uh, there is in the world there is coalitions and there, for example in like GCC GCC is one of those coalitions that has become very robust like the UN the East and uh, East Asian con uh, countries and there are many examples that we can see coalitions between different countries that, pe that pursue peace and pursue culture and the role that for Islam that calls for peace in, in all circumstances in all conditions and propagating the, 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 the values of friendliness 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 and peace and love and accepting the others and accept and respecting role uh, and religions and place of worship we need to face all those claims all those misconceptions about islam we need to clarify to the west and to the east that islam is a religion of peace and islam is phobia this topic islamophobia is has nothing to do with islam it's for those extremist groups who went away who become terrorists and they are they have they got this this is very ugly characteristics that we don't want we want to to repeat this characteristic in a country like this the culture is based on our religion our culture leads us to a equality and justice Islam, no, peace will never undermine the rights of people and we need to propagate and spread the values of peace and good values we are human after all we will praise those values happily peace is a value that is should be propagated and spread by cultured people and politicians and also artists and is based on connections that leads us to the comprehensive peace and and they say it's a it's an absolute world it could lead us to the comprehensive peace we have to activate the role of culture that serves the peace what that makes it very effective effective or active not reactive the elites should play the role scientists researchers they should play the role and they have power that exceeds the power of politicians and also they are the influential power and they should and they should use their soft power to serve our interests and to enhance the development and happiness and peace and peace the the vision for culture and we have to invest invest and develop our arabic culture the pure culture that address to all aspects of human we need to mix between the modernity that based on the technology technological advancement that we witness all over the world and with preserving our identity and our genuine our originality and preserving our history we should not lose our history we should preserve also at the same time we should go and hand in hand with the technological advancement we we should not forget our identity the new civilization should not forget make us forget our roots and our arabic and islam and our culture arabic culture and islamic culture can can be can can work to propagate and market the, the coexistence and peace all those are foundations and pillars to spread the peace and the the pillars of peace in our Arabic culture is very robust and very strong in East and the West because the core the core of Islam is and the core of Arabic is the good Arabic values that we were raised on it's important that we show to the world we should this those values should manifest itself to the world and, and should call for international cooperation 
and enhancing connections and relationship and enhancing our interests. Culture, in other words, enriches the peace and brings people together and also brings nations together. This all based on how keen we are, we are in investing on in, in, uh, in culture to support the external relationship. The more we pay attention for the culture, the more we advanced in our culture, the more we presented our culture, the more the world opens its doors for us. We should not be isolated. No matter what, our culture is advanced, we should never be isolated. And our culture is very diverse. The more we pay attention to the cultural component which that plays a role, the diplomatic, inter international diplomatic will be active. It will be also be respected and and we also pay attention to, we should care for this culture, the human rights, human rights and freedom and propagating peace and propagating culture. This is the best ambassador by addressing those aspects. Also, the diplomatic diplomats, whoever works with diplomats, should play the role of enabling culture to play a very important role in facing the challenges in our in the political realm and and the challenges that also prevent any new challenge developments that are taking place in the world. We should face those. Uh, we should help those countries objectively and should be also be partial and we should play, play a very active role. A country shouldn't, shouldn't be inactive, shouldn't be passive. Any country should, a country should help each other, should play an active role in helping those p countries to achieve peace. This is what we call cultural peace. We call it a cultural peace that influences people and nations and the memory of people. And it has very positive impact on people and individuals and also on the political relationship. Culture plays a very important role in the external in polit in relationship and political relationship and reaching countries and reaching people's hearts and mind without any, any impact, without any negative impact. And culture could help promote and, and market any country without being imposed upon people. The third element is complement the, complement the other elements and enhances what we said earlier, culture and the coexistence. And it's very important element. Allah said in his, in the, in the, in, in the Quran said, Oh people, we created you male and female, and we created you nations and tribes to get to know each other. Islam is a religion of that calls for coexistence. Islam is a religion that encourages to preserve the dignity of human being, and that human beings should be honored and should be their dignity should be preserved. Our nature. If we observe our nature, does, we don't tend to create problems or hatred. Our nature doesn't accommodate hatred because it's the, our soul, our spirit that created by Allah, by God. It's, our nature is, calls for peace, love, and closeness. And our souls, our pure souls in our spirit, calls for peace and tranquil, tranquility the, and serenity that can be achieved by coexistence. Hatred and anonymity is something that we that we something we gained from the international from the environment that changes the the characteristics of human that change, changes our nature. The environment could modify or change our good nature. People, nations can be respected by the major by by the their attitude, by their the way they relate to people, by how friendly they are. 
those this characteristic that could be described, it could be could be could be owned by some people or nations. However, there are there is a gap between the political or between the political system and the nation in terms of coexistence. We can see some gangs that rules the some gangs that rule countries in a in a manner that contradicts human nature. And in other words, we saw those oppressed people want to live in peace. And that fact could change the trends of cultural trends and could influence and impact on those people negatively or positively. Those people who would join those gangs and, those, and there are people who would fight those gangs and this is the conflict. Now, in our the, the coexistence culture, we, are, we find people, powerless nations and people, oppressed, suppressed under a regime or a gang or, or, or by a dictator who oppresses those people and those nations and, and undermine their freedom and liberty. There is no doubt that nations will flourish if they have a, a practical policies that enhances the p values of coexistence and peace and living side by side and living on this land that, should, that was created by Allah for us to build. An example for like that is the UAE, is a great example where hundreds of different nationalities and ethnicities, more than more than the the number that was issued by the UN, all those nations living side by side in peace and happiness and in harmony. And they all agree to build this nation. And our religion, I go, I, we, I go, I, we again, we talk about the identity of human. We should not forget that, we shouldn't forget other identities. We should respect other nations and their identities as our religion encourage, encourages us to encourage others. And we might have diversity and variety in terms of cultures and identities, but they can all live in peace and harmony in one country. In particular, in particular, those countries that, that have diverse culture, cultures and backgrounds in Allah is more knowledgeable. And this is an example that explains that created this world for all people to live in peace and in harmony and coexistence. No matter how our differences are, we still can live in peace and harmony, no matter how different we are in terms of religions, and ethnicity, we still can live in peace and harmony. Now, this is will this is will this will improve our knowledge, but it will never get us back. When we talk about when we talk about how we can mo gain more knowledge and skills and languages, and get to know other cultures, this is this improves and encourage increases our knowledge in terms of knowing others' ethnicity, other ethnicity. So coexistence requires. Not, coexistence requires us not to be isolated and we are responsible for building this world and farming and building and manufacturing. We are partners in that process. We are partners in export, import, and we have a rule in terms of as a, either a, a producer or producer, exporter or consumer. The word is connections, production, exporting, importing, and consumptions. All those stages or phases we meet. We, comp we complement each other. We export oil. The oil is used by others. We export and import other uh, products and items. And this connection and this interaction is very important and very crucial for us to coexist as human. The world has doubled over the years, and the countries are getting are, and the countries are getting closer to each other thanks to globalization, and there is indeed positives and and pros for globalization, and we should have people who protect the notion of opening openness. We have to look for transforming 
knowledge to others and we should we should we should not look at any nation we shouldn't look at any nation we, there is no YouTube, utopia there is no utopia utopia there are criminals and there are offenders therefore we have to have legislation however we say our religion calls for peace and coexistence our value arabic values all those make us look at the positive aspects of our of the utopia that called by the greek philosopher for a long period of time in our in arabic world we call for culture and we were pioneers for culture for all over the world starting by philosophy and religion and and astrology and and arts and islamic arts that dictates transforming or transferring knowledge to the east and the west and it was the platform it was the bridge for communication and this is our identity and this is our arabic character that we should be proud of this will should not change how come our character how come our arabic identity changes it changes how this could happen in this era there are societies unfortunately in arabic world in the war and destruction and some societies have become isolated from the arabic nations for 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 only for material gains culture therefore should inspire societies to live side by side to coexist to face any challenges that we are facing now those deadly and risky wars and that this this situation that is really caused a big embarrassment we go to a very very uh, very ambiguous situation coexistence and religion is the out, is the way out I hope I won't I hope I didn't take too long of your time culture inspires societies to coexist and we should we should uh, uh, rely on this approach and we should face that the deadly and destructive events that we are witnessing that have become very prominent lately and and we should face by the women for many reasons and first of all the the external intervention in our arabic world because honestly we have we have ignorance illiteracy and backwardness and although there is kind of facing the illiteracy by the women of women by women of the knowledge and we have belief that countries should alleviate and countries shouldn't Margin, marginalize anyone unfortunately those interests this material interest those ma ma material interests and those and uh, um, this is an interest to expand their their power to get to the power to get to the regime and they are leading their followers those illiterate followers and they don't those followers who don't have knowledge or lit culture they started from a country to another the flourishment of culture is based on the the national security and the political freedom and the democracy and the ability to improve the societies however those people don't want for knowledge and culture to propagate in among people so they can lead people interaction and collaboration has been also marginalized and the culture should be also alleviated and we should enhance the aspects of cult respect and and peace and indeed we shouldn't be ex we should we shouldn't embrace any extreme views 
We should be very moder modern, modern, modern. People or nations will never flourish unless they pay, play a role in flourishing their culture and in emphasizing the importance of their reserve. The, uh, the end, I would like to wrap it, I'll wrap it up by saying to, to accept, to take coexistence as approach for us, we should rely on the main pillars to activate the interaction, human interaction on the, on the land. The first one, first of all, the component of the education, the family. A family has to play a role. The, a family should educate their kids not to distinguish between people based on ethnicity or religion or doctrine. A family should teach their parents, their kids, to should become a, a f parents should be a, a role model for their kids. And whoever were even a school should enhance that concept that student should never distinguish between other people right from childhood, from kindergarten, that there is no difference between people, people are equal. Also, we should teach them to have uh, school trips, to visit hospitals and visit other places where they can learn coexistence and peace, empathy and sympathy where, with people wherever they are and whoever they are. And there is a role played by the, the social corporations and social institutions to play a role in a, a very active, effective or act, active roles to enhance coexistence, to build societies from all people play side by side. And, and each one has his own experiences and his exper expertise, and they all can work hand in hand. And there is a very important and vital element, which is volunteer, volunteers. Volunteers is one of the highest form of human activities. People who volunteers in UAE, there are initiatives and programs and projects and charity and all over the world could, could witness that. Like the Red Crescent, the initiative of Zayed initiatives, all this enhance the the concept of a, before I conclude, before I wrap it up, thanks to Allah, this is a word, this is from my heart, that the experiment, the experience or the experiment of UAE or the, in terms of coexistence have been taught all over the world. In the, the year of tolerance that is over a few days ago, many, many projects, many things have been accomplished no country ever exceeded in terms of enhancing and, and enhancing the concept of tolerance in a practical sense. And what we are going to witness in Expo 22 in terms of openness to other cultures on one uh, on one land and land and a, play, a land will, that will meet everybody. Well, everybody will meet. Everybody will have a chance to get to know each other. And in the grace of Allah. This accomplishments will continue. This great accomplishment will continue on the pay, on the road, on the uh, as it has been planned by the late Sheikh Zayed, and followed by his and followed by his sons to preserve the originality and dealing with others in peace and respect. And UAE accepts and embraces all values for peace and stability and peace. Thanks and greetings to everyone. Uh, Thanks to Dr. Kamal Abdul Jalil, the Secretary General of National Council for Culture and Arts for this lecture, for this very valuable culture of the time has, we run out of time, but I, I, I will recap the importance of 
culture and the power of culture in our in human soul. There have been three there have been three elements: the culture and uh, promoting peace, development, and coexistence, including the culture in impacting of culture in enhancing and in enhancing human co coexistence. Now we will open the floor kindly. Whoever wishes to ask a question or has a comment, kindly present yourself and kindly be brief as brief as possible. Kindly as brief as possible. Thanks, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this lecture. This is an amazing lecture. My question is very brief. My question is, Doctor, my name is Taysia Suleiman. How can we, through culture, how can we break the break and overcome the differences and conflicts between Arabic countries so the culture will become the, the cure and the way out for our conflicts, internal conflicts? Uh, thanks for your questions. It's a very good one. I mentioned on my elements about peace and culture that the reconciliation, being honest before we reconcile. And we have countries should be responsible for taking their role in terms of taking this very important component for a culture is first honesty and frankness before we reconcile. And this is a responsibility of, of governments. We have to face. And there should, there should be honest dialogue and, and reliable dialogue. And there have to be honest intentions between Arabs to manufacture peace, first of all, within, them, within, within themselves. And we shouldn't consider other, others as betrayal from East and West. East and West, they are Arabs. We are responsible to build a new generation. There are, we have to have honest and genuine intentions. And we have a project to build a future culture flourished with peace. And that project, based on the Arabic League, although the spirit is still there, and we have to have a determination to build that peace. As I said earlier, there is a project for the Arabic comprehensive plan that has been set not very long back and is renewable every five years. And it is, has been reviewed by experts in the Arabic um, Cultural League. But where is it? We cannot see it in the reality. It's a good plan, but has been implemented. It's, is it close to the Arabic uh, people? We want it, as you in your question, we want to have a culture that takes us to peace and coexistence. And you, and I've highlighted some examples from our history and our Islam as well and our Quran. However, there is no that we cannot that we can't see it in reality. We can see it only a theory. Everyone has his own plan. Unfortunately, despite our attempt to from those countries that believe in peace and stability and coexistence like our like our like GCC countries we we are led by the wisdom and righteousness we find a, a complete chaos from Yemen and Syria Libya Iraq because of one reason our inability to face the external intervention this is the reason the last question or comment, please. Last question or comment, please. At the back, at the back. Briefly, please, briefly. Greetings all. Hassan, I have a question. Your Excellency, uh, last, the Arabic uh, Kuwaiti magazine, I have missed the Arabic magazine. We were raised on reading that Arabic uh, magazine. We consider it as a university. It brings us all together. And I haven't I have looked for it on many Arabic capitals. We couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I would like to uh, praise the, auto, uh, the publications of the 
the center, the cultural center publications. Thank you very much. Thanks for, uh, for your question. It's my pleasure to hear your praise. The Arabic uh, magazine was published in 1985. Is one of those magazines that is very stable, very serious, that well, publishes essays and articles and publishes many important articles. It, it was a, a new era, uh, it's a new dawn for journalism and press. This magazine was very successful and it has a very strong leaves in forward in the 60s and 70s and even the 80s. It, had, it was faced by some challenges that prevented it from shine again for many reasons. First, for, for example, the first is the electronic media, the other competitions by other magazines, a magazine that is colorful, and other colorful magazines competed with Al Arabi. Until today, we have new magazines, very in the culture like like a Sharga, very good magazine, Al Arabiya in the in the. So the Arabic magazine was the pioneer, but th thanks Allah, thanks, we still have hope. We worked on in the Arabic, uh, in the Kuwaiti Arabic culture. Uh, the Arabic magazine used to, used to be managed by the media, but now it's managed by another plan. Now we have a comprehensive developing plan for this magazine and we can see the fruits and the outcomes and the enhancement and development of, the, of this magazine. Also, we are continue to in our uh, cultural council to uh, continue to issue other publications the al marifa the animal fikr the international culture international uh, innovations and funun magazine those are is a package of the best stable and and serious publications that produced by the cultural council to the all over the world and is and it's it has a very good rate, it's very good price, and available on the online for, for free. You can review it online for free. Now it's online for free. Now we have some challenges in terms of distributing to the Arabic countries because we, we, we see many challenges in the Arabic world and we cannot get to the main, um, we can, once we get to the capitals, we cannot distribute to further than the capital and there are many challenges. So hopefully the Arabi is in good shape and I hope that uh, people will keep on reading it. With, with this, we come to an end to our uh, uh, lecture. I would like to repeat, thanking on behalf of Jamal Swaidi, the manager of the, the Everest Center for Strategic Studies and Research, thanking uh, the Kamal Abdul, Majid, Abdul, Abdul Jalil, Secretary General of National Council for Cultural Arts and Literature. I would like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, till we meet again. Thank you very much.